The Soys are back in town. <laughs> soy boy, soy, soy boy, boy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to episode three of Monster Fuzz. I am Rob, and the other half is. It's Eamon. It's, it is indeed Eamon. Um, quick little uh, introduction, or not an introduction, a little infomercial about our uh, social media. We are now on all of that stuff. So Twitter is Monster Fuzz Pod, and uh, Facebook and all the rest is at Monster Fuzz Podcast. And so what we want to do with that is have as much uh, listener interaction as possible. So if you guys have any weird stories or anything like that you want to reach out and talk about, um, maybe an alien touched you inappropriately or you know something like that, just let us know and tell us your story and we'll probably read it on the podcast. Isn't that right, Eamon? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, right now we're looking for stories about consensual touching between humans <laughs> and aliens. So if you have one of those, that'd be really nice to hear. <laughs> Yeah, that is, yeah, that, that that actually uh, alien romance uh, novels could be a, a genre that we could move into. I kind of want to do an audiobook reading. Have you ever listened to audiobooks? I I have, but unfortunately, I've never listened to like alien romance audio. audio oh, books, I, I listen I to those all the time. <laughs> But, like, uh, um, but yeah, like the way that they read audiobooks is really funny to me. I like even when I'm listening to an audiobook, I just like laugh. I'm not going to mention where I listen to audiobooks because if they want me to mention them, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to have a sponsor. I'm afraid. So until then, <laughs> it's just a random place that I listen to audiobooks. You know? Yeah, it's it's a weird one because like when you listen to a podcast, generally it's it's pretty fluid, and you know, there's it, there's either one person talking or there's two people kind of having a conversation. But I know I listened to one and it was narrated really well, but it was still very much like and then verily. He said, and you're like, ah, oh, man, I can't get it. I love it when like a fella's reading it and he does like the female voices and stuff. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, stop, Cornwallis, he said, <laughs> or she said, um, that type of thing. It's like really funny. So I think we should actually, if anyone wants to write in any fiction, actually, that'd be great. And uh, me and Eamon can then uh, read it like an audio book. That'd be pretty funny, actually, I think. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, I, I'll do the girls voices if you want. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, okay, but you know, uh, hook a brother up, you know. You probably have a good girl voice on, yeah. You'd be like, so do you come here often, sailor? <laughs> oh, you know, sexy alien. Like How do you? Oh do? shit, that's pretty good. <laughs> Which are you from? Uh, the Alpha Centauri star system. <laughs> and what a segue into this Pentagon Ooh. alien talk, huh? How's about he that? planned it all along, ladies and gentlemen. He <laughs> planned it all. Look at that. I didn't even know about this. It's just liquid podcasting. <laughs> um, what do you make of all that? Man, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, like, I think some of the videos we'd seen before, um, and yeah, they seem, you know, very legitimate. It's interesting that, uh, you know, the US Department of Defense is deciding to, to put them out there and go, listen, we don't know what these are, but they're weird, right? Yeah, that's that's the the really strange part is that like it's and I kind of have to remind myself of that is that these clips if if you guys aren't aware like just search uh, Pentagon UFO clips um like these these have been circulating for quite a while and you know so that's whatever but what has actually happened is the government has come out and said yeah this is our footage and yes these are unidentified as of now and some of these clips are like over ten years old right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think um, like 10 years ago, it was when the Pope had said, if there are aliens, God has created them and it's all good if they show up. And at the same time, the Russians had released a load of um, a load of um, documents, UFO documents about like guys in a lake getting attacked by weird beings, like mm. unidentified submerged objects. And I remember you and me being like, oh, it's all about to happen. It's all about to happen. And then nothing happened. <laughs> well, or did it? And we just don't know. Ooh. And yeah, that's and that's and that's the footage that we will be talking about in ten years' time, once we are rich um, alien erotica fan fiction writers, mm-hmm. narrators. Sorry, narrators. Yeah, I was actually funnily enough, I was listening to. Um, I don't know if you ever listened to the podcast Mysterious Universe, but I was listening to it earlier uh, this week when I was going on one of my many runs uh, yes. to try and quell the boredom of being stuck inside all day. As you do, and uh, they were talking about a. Uh, 
an alien lady who was really upset. This is apparently a story from like an actual guy. Right. And he was really upset. She was really upset because her husband, her alien husband, had no interest in having sex with her. Uh, <laughs> so she was trying to have sex with like earthling guys. And okay. uh, he, she apparently like her her thing was too small to fit the earthling guy properly but she she was trying anyway and it was just sort of i don't know kind of just one of those awkward sex stories where it's just things aren't really fitting together well and eventually you just have to get a cup of coffee and say look it was good while it lasted <laughs> you know, so. the, the real fun was trying you know that was the, mm. that was the fun. and the friends you made along the way yeah, yeah. that's my like my go-to reference um <laughs> at the minute to. but uh aside from aliens <laughs> and all that mental shite um what have you been up to to keep busy during this it's it's basically running and stuff like that is it yeah man running um i've been play i i was playing a lot of final fantasy 7 last mm. week this week i've been kind of busy uh, i've i've started taking naps i never <laughs> usually do that but at like six o'clock i take like a nap for an hour or two and then I so just that's why you're so slow wake. fucking replying to texts yeah, I'm asleep. You're the worst man, <laughs> You're the worst man for replying to texts. <laughs> it's literally the worst man in the universe, folks, for replying to anything. Is Eamon on O'Neill? I could That's be true. dying, and I text you like, "Man, I need help. There's an alien raping me in the woods," and I I get a text like two hours later, "Are you okay? <laughs> you still in the woods, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, no, I'm I'm yeah. dead. <laughs> Zorgon. Yeah, I'm not good. I'm not good. Oh gosh! Speaking um, of tentacle rape, oh, that's a, a Jesus fan. We really are on the segues. Um, oh my god! In this episode, we are talking about the Kraken. So, Emin, if you want to tell everyone what the Kraken is, in case you didn't know, <laughs> uh, so the Kraken is a legendary cephalopod like sea monster um so like a squid or an octopus uh it's gigantic in size um and it features heavily in scandinavian folklore uh, according to the norse sagas the kraken dwells off the coast of norway and greenland and terrorizes nearby sailors right so yeah. so basically yeah you you're 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 thinking about a giant octopus squid in some cases a crab that lives in the depths of the sea and only surfaces to attack and swallow ships and men alike and it's a uh, it's alleged to be responsible for many a lost ship in the seafaring glory days um yeah interesting uh the kraken has, has sort of come up in a lot of um like um seafaring books or like any type of pop culture with like ocean characters there's there's been a lot of like i've seen krakens throughout like my childhood and stuff in just different pop culture things um and most people like maybe they don't know the term kraken um but yeah just think of like a giant octopus really or a giant squid you know that's kind of the two most yeah. common but um since the late 18th century kraken have been depicted in a number of ways primarily as large octopus creatures and it has often been alleged that Pontipidon's Kraken might have been we probably butchered up Pontipidon it's it's you it's definitely a, said it better than I said it last time <laughs> uh, right, I'll Ponta go with your way or something <laughs> like uh, Pontipidon so so Pontipidon Pontipidon Kraken might have been based on sailors observations of the giant squid the kraken is also depicted to have spikes on its suckers in the earliest depictions Yikes. however the creatures were more crab-like than octopus-like and generally possess traits that are associated with large whales rather than giant squid some traits of kraken resemble undersea volcanic activity occurring occurring in the Iceland region, including bubbles of water, sudden dangerous currents, and appearance of new islets. So when you say islets, um, yeah, like uh, in some uh, legend of the Kraken, you know, it's the size of an island. It's like it, it, sailors actually get confused by that. But um, our squid shares something in common with Michele in that he's quite hard to pin down in terms of form. You know, some say that uh, it's an octopus, some say it's a crab, some say a whale, and some say a squiddy. So, um, yeah, Eamon, if you want to get into the history of uh, the Kraken. Yeah, so after returning from Greenland, um, an, an anonymous author of the old Norwegian natural history work, <laughs> Konungs Skugsja, 
I think. Konung Skuja. 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 I think so. That. I was in Iceland. Well, sorry, you, you should fucking know. So come on now. Ah, uh, look, man. <laughs> my, my, my holiday didn't end as well as yours. Konung Skuja, which is like a... Uh, circa 1250, so the middle of the 13th century, described in detail the physical characteristics and feeding behavior of these beasts. The narrator proposed that there must be only two in existence, stemming from the observation that the beasts have always been sighted in the same parts of the Greenland Sea, and that each seemed incapable of reproduction as there was no increase in their numbers. Oh. Do you want to do your best sailor impression now? Yeah. Give us a. I'll, I'll try and do like an e book. <laughs> <laughs> Go ebook, okay. There is a fish that is still unmentioned, which is scarcely advisable to speak about on account of its size, because it will seem to most people incredible. There are only a few who can speak upon it clearly, because it is seldom near land nor appears where it may be seen by fishermen. And I suppose there are not many of the sort of fish in the sea. Most often in our tongue, we call it half goofa or kraken. Nor can I conclusively speak about its length in L's. Because the time he has shown before men, he has appeared more like land than like a fish. Neither have I heard that one had been caught or found dead, and it seems to me as though there must be no more than two in the oceans, and I deem that each is unable to reproduce itself, for I believe that they are always the same ones. Then too, neither would it do for other fish if the half goofa were of such a number as other whales, on account of their vastness and how much subsistence that they need. It is said to be the nature of these fish, that when one shall desire to eat, then it stretches up its neck with a great belching, and following this belching comes forth much food, so that all kinds of fish that are near to hand will come to the present location. Then we'll gather together, both small and large. Jesus, this is like, do you know when you're, in, uh, when you're a kid in like church, and you have to read something, and you're up on the fucking thing, and you're going on forever, <laughs> and you're like, "Will this fucking end?" But this great fish lets its mouth stand <laughs> open the while, and the gap is no less wide than that of a great sound or bite. And nor the fish avoid running together there in their great numbers. But as soon as its stomach and mouth is full, then it locks together its jaws and has the fish all caught and enclosed. That before greedily came there looking for food. Whew, Lord, I think I've Ooh, called Hallelujah. it after reading that. My Hallelujah. lungs are... <laughs> My lungs are depleted. It feels like I'm after doing 300 bars. <laughs> See, man, that, uh, that, 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 that audiobook reading stuff, it's, you know, it's full-time I, jobs. I might, I might have underestimated um, audiobook reading, but I will get better as we go along, I think. <laughs> I think yeah. you're already great, though. Thanks, Em. So what's That's next? Okay. So I guess according to that, the, the Kraken is extremely large animal larger than whales and and the fact that sailors confuse it with like a, a body of land just means that it must be bananas in its size mm, yeah so you're talking like i think i don't think there's any cases in history where that's actually happened where a sailor is like oh what's that creature oh it's land i, I don't think that's ever happened or vice versa um so apparently this is the first time that that's really happened um so it's, yeah it's, it's a strange one isn't it? Mm, very weird mm. um well i suppose in keeping with the historic theme of of kraken sightings mm -hmm. uh the famous swedish 18th century naturalist carl von linne mm -hmm. included the kraken in the first edition of its systematic natural catalog systema nature from <laughs> 1735 that's I think that's how you say it. It is, yeah. That's exactly how it's pronounced. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it sounded sounded good. Mm -hmm. uh, there he gave the animal a scientific name, Microcosmos, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but omitted it in later editions. So I don't know. Do, why why do you think he might have he might have gotten rid of that from later? Um, so I suppose if he put it in there, it must have been popular enough at the time. Uh, around the seventeenth century. We've started to learn as we've done a few episodes, and we have more episodes in the pipeline. Uh, that all a lot of these start in the 17th century for some reason. A lot of these um, sort of uh, tales of, of different creatures. I'm not quite sure why. Was was a was a sort of a boom of seafaring around that time, maybe, and maybe he was just hearing a lot of sailor stories and put it in. And then maybe regretted that he put it in because, like, it sounded too fantastical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's totally possible as well. You can imagine being a sailor out in the sea in the 1700s. Like, the boredom must be unreal. Just lads, 
kind of doing wank marathons and running mm. out of fruit and their gums and teeth falling out and everything <laughs> like <clears throat> you know maybe you just start telling tall tales so i wonder did he kind of put it in taking everything as they said um as, as gospel and then as he went on he's like actually these boys might be telling me porky pies um yeah, maybe so. Yeah, our our um dude man um Pontipidon or Pontipidon or whatever, uh the Bishop of Bargain in his Death First uh, Forsog Panorgus Natural League uh, history. That was a good thing. The first that attempt was there. Oh, you'd stumble. <laughs> Fair play. Oh no no no. The first the first attempt of a natural history in Norway. That's what it translates to there. So if you're Norwegian and you hear this, you probably get a good laugh out of that. Um, absolute balls of that title in his book um he made several claims regarding the kraken including the notion that the creature was sometimes mistaken for an island which is yeah the second time we've heard this and that the real danger to sailors was not the creature itself but rather the whirlpool left in its wake however pontipidon also described the destructive potential of the giant beast it is said that if the creature's arms were to lay hold of the largest man of war, which at the time a man of war is, is a type of ship, it's like a big galleon, big, you know, old fashioned type of ship, they would pull it down to the bottom. Um, so, yeah, according to this, then he has arms. So, like, this would be like squid like or octopus like, more so octopus, but squids are kind of the same. Um, according yeah. to Pontipidon, Norwegian, Norwegian fishermen often took the risk of trying to fish over Kraken since the catch was so plentiful. Hence the saying, you must have fished on Kraken um, as opposed to smoking Kraken or something like that. Oh, <laughs> um, There's something you might not know about me, Joe Rogan. I smoke Kraken. <laughs> Pontipidon also proposed that a specimen of the monster, perhaps a young and careless one, was washed, was washed ashore and died in Alstahaug in 1680. Um, by 1755, Pontipidon's description of the Kraken had been translated into English. So do you want to talk about mm. Swedish author Jacob Wallenberg? Ah, so our friend Jacob Wallenberg described the Kraken in the 1781 work Min Son Pag Elgen, oh, My wow. Son on the Galley. Amazing. Uh, I'll try do. I'll try do uh, an audiobook voice as well. Ah, uh, do please. <clears throat> Kraken, also called the crabfish, which is not that huge for heads and tails counter. He is no larger than our Oland is wide, which is uh, just breaking the the rhythm of that. There, that's less than sixteen kilometers, which wouldn't seem to be small for a, a creature, in, oh. in in my opinion. Oh. Tiny sure, says Rob. <laughs> Okay, getting back into it. <clears throat> he stays at the sea floor, constantly surrounded by innumerable small fishes who serve as his food and are fed by him in return. For his meal, if I remember correctly what E. Potapin writes, lasts no longer than three months, and another three are then needed to digest it. His excrements nurture in the following an army of lesser fish, and for this reason, fishermen plumb after his resting place. Gradually, Kraken ascends to the surface, and when he is at 10 to 12 fathoms, the boats had better move out of his vicinity, as he will shortly thereafter burst up like a floating island, spurting water from his dreadful nostrils and making ring waves around him, which can reach many miles. Could one doubt that this is the Leviathan of Job? Oh, oh. <clears throat> could one doubt that indeed. That was, that was a very good job. Yeah. I kind of tried to sound like Microsoft Mike. I think, that, I think that's a, <laughs> why what made it good. Um, yeah, like audiobook reading is just so funny. It's like Cornwallis thought <laughs> dearly of Anne Marie, but it's it's the funny, end. isn't it? It's, <laughs> <laughs> she was a catch that he could not fish. <laughs> oh, but indeed. It's like it's like um. <laughs> oh indeed but when you listen to politicians or, or the news or something like that and you're kind of going why the fuck don't these people talk like they normally talk do you know what i mean like why yeah. is that voice the way that you're meant to talk like on the news like tonight on the 6-1 news thousands of people screaming for priests as covid19 takes over the country pat with more and be like jay's you know what i mean it's just like it's 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 a why not just be like "Ooh, not a great one today now lads the old covid is uh she's spreading fast she's spreading fast yeah and like people prefer that as well like people prefer like newscasters or personalities in general mm. that are more sort of natural down touch. to art yeah i mean it's like us like there's no accent i'm not putting on there's no way that i could consistently put on an accent so you just have to deal with the waxered twang you know <laughs> yeah i've lost a bit of mine from living away for the last few years uh, it's not it's not gone that much now no it's corn bad 
could one doubt that this is the Leviathan of Job? <laughs> um, nice. nice. In 1802, the French malacologist, which there's one for you to look up, uh, Pierre oh. Denis de Montfort, recognized the existence of two kinds of giant octopus in Histoire Naturelle Générale et Particulière de Mollusques. <laughs> <laughs> An enc- encyclopedic description of mollusks. <laughs> imagine reading that book. Uh, no, that imagine? sounds fucking sounds like a great read, doesn't it? Yeah, a fucking a book about mollusks. God bless. Manfred claimed that the first time, and, and even look in eighteen or two, a man was had a job talking about mollusks. Like, why can't we get jobs where we just talk about stupid shit? Well, I suppose that's podcasting, right? Well, I just we're trying, trying to, to do now. Yeah, <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Come on, Pierre Denis de Montfort. Yes, we're, we're, we're he's our new mascot. Um, so yeah. <laughs> once we get into like making March, we can do like Pierre Denis de Montfort uh, ac- Academy or something like that. Um, oh, it'd be like I think first of all, just T-shirt saying "Follow your dreams" with a picture of Pierre Denis de Montfort. You know, <laughs> I love les mules, so I write the book about them. The mollusque. Um, uh, so, yeah, Manfred claimed that the first type, the Kraken octopus, had been described by Norwegian sailors and American whalers alike, as well as ancient writers such as Pliny the Elder. The much larger second type, the colossal octopus, was reported to have attacked a sailing vessel from St. Malo off the coast of Angola. So, you know, what we should actually talk about is, like, that actually did happen. So, like, people at the time... Um, whether it be false, whether it be sailors making it up, did report Krakens killing them, right? And like uh, terrorizing yeah, yeah. ships, and and you know this did happen. Um, yeah, over time. And you only have to look through uh, some of the old, you know, the, the artwork of, of the time, and everyone's familiar with those uh, those kind of. I think there were maybe wood chip pictures where where the 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 Kraken is just basically devouring a whole ship the tentacles wrapped around the, the the masts and the sails and everything you know looks really really terrifying yeah he's uh the squiddy doesn't um mess around but our dude monfort later dared more sensational claims he proposed the 10 british warships including the captured french ship of the Lineville de paris de paris uh which had mysteriously <laughs> disappeared one night in 1782 must have been attacked and sunk by giant octopuses that was it had to have been giant octopuses yeah must must have like <laughs> Um, must have the British however knew courtesy of a survivor from Ville de Paris Ville de Paris I need to say it properly that the ships <laughs> that the ships had been lost in a hurricane off the coast of Newfoundland in September 1782 resulting in a disgraceful <laughs> revelation for Montfort. Um, ah, so Montfort my mollusk books are ruined <laughs> I will never sell anymore <laughs> He, was, he sounds like quite a good character. Um, that dude. He's like he Molly sounds Malone. like the. <laughs> he's he trolls like books of mollusks. And so he just trolls mollusk <laughs> books of people. You know, it's it's like the thing is though. Like I love he would have made like the worst detective ever, like the anti Poirot or whatever, because he's like of all the things that could have happened, like a hurricane. You know, the, we know that the weather happens because we live in a place where mm. there's atmosphere and weather blows through the town every now and then but he's like no no fuck a hurricane it was probably a giant squid that took that thing down like there was no sort of never seen one (laughs) don't know if they're real definitely one of those yeah like it's it's strange it is like that whole um the whole idea that it was just like his logical conclusion is just very bizarre to me um so you know we've we've gone into the mythology and we've sort of talked about the early 1700s and, and, and when when it sort of came to pop culture of the time i suppose um so what is the largest octopus around emma so oh, the largest octopus around uh, the giant pacific octopus is considered the largest octopus species in the world um, it inhabits the northern pacific ocean off the united states up to alaska and around japan um the largest individual one found on record weighed 600 pounds and measured 30 feet across in length. On average, though, these octopuses weigh closer to about 110 pounds and measure somewhere in the region of 16 feet across once they're fully grown, as opposed to 16 kilometers. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, uh, 
Like other octopuses, uh, the giant Pacific octopus is extremely intelligent and has been observed opening jars and mimicking other species, uh, which is pretty interesting. In fact, I did. I went scuba diving in Japan oh. uh, a, a, a long time ago, but I did see an octopus on the did you? on the the, the the bottom of the sea the seabed in Okinawa. Some dog? Yeah, so <laughs> some dog. That's me, buddy. Uh, I was yeah, like maybe twenty meters down. Um, but again, it sort of changes color. Goes. It didn't like it. I certainly wouldn't have mistaken it for a, a sixteen-kilometer um, land mass-looking animal. Uh, it, it didn't look huge, the one I saw. To be fair, but it was yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Snaking off, looking at octopuses, huh? Snaking off, looking at octopus, especially in Japan. You know, <laughs> yeah, snaking off in Japan. Um, yeah, squid, <laughs> squid porn. Got, um, <laughs> we've give got... me, give me, give me some fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fun facts about <laughs> giant Pacific octopuses. <laughs> it's probably best to just jump onto that one. Yeah. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, um, some trivia for it if you're ever having an octopus team to quiz. Um, giant octopuses can change color in one tenth of a second. Um, they can be found more than 330 feet underwater. So, this is important mm-hmm. that we talk about uh, the Kraken with squiddies and octopuses. Octopuses are found deep sea, um, as are squids. And there's a lot in the deep sea that we don't know. In fact, 95% of the ocean is undiscovered and uh, uncharted. So is it possible that something like that exists? It's kind of hard to know. Um, But yeah, uh, octopuses apparently only live for two to three years, which is quite bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. There's um, there's a lot of stuff about octopi, octopuses, Mm. that... I, there was something that I read a long time ago. Now, it wasn't saying that octopuses were aliens, but it, mm. it was saying that they're the only species that's most like what we might expect to find on an alien planet in our own planet. Some biologist was saying it. Now, he might have been smoking the Kraken that night, but, you know, he, he said that, like, they, they almost seem like a completely different life form. Like, they came from a different planet. They fucking do, man. Which and they smell. They have a sense of smell. Mm. Octopuses. Like, yeah. like a fucking smell. What the fuck? Like that's mental. <laughs> it's a fucking underwater yeah. creature and it can smell like that's it. I wonder if they're pissed off with all the fucking sewage that we pump into the ocean. Yeah, maybe that's why they stay so far underwater, like that, 330 feet or whatever. There's like, fuck that. They could have been quite social beforehand. You know, maybe they used to come up onto the beach and hang out and stuff, play fucking volleyball mm-hmm. or something, you know? Yeah, they're they're I, my favorite story about an octopus is um the one in the aquarium. So like there was an octopus in one tank and there was another tank with some fish in it, yeah. and the octopus used to get out in the middle of the night and he was able to walk across <laughs> uh to where the fish were, get into their tank, eat how many fish he wanted with his little octopus beak, and then get back out and go back into his own tank. So people are like, "What's happening to the fish?" Like it was almost like he knew he was like, oh, if I get caught here in the morning now, there might be trouble. So I better, I better scoot back to my own tank. And there was the the telepathic octopus that they had for predicting one of the World Cups or one the of the World I think. Cup. Yeah, yeah, wasn't it? Um, what was his name again? I can't. Was it Ollie or something? Probably not. Something like Otto or Ollie or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, so you know, it's probably not an octopus um based on you know what we know about octopus octopi uh you know it's it's probably not one of those guys however enter the giant squid now this is where uh the tale takes a turn for reality i would like to think and we are out of the, the land of bullshit and we are into squid territory in front of me here we have pictures of the giant squid uh which is about approximately 12 foot long in that picture maybe um and it's a big it's a big dude like the giant squid is massive um so just to tell you about the giant squid um is it's a species of deep ocean dwelling squid in the family of i'm not going to even try that name uh giant squid can throw a tremendous can grow to a tremendous size, offering an example of deep sea gigantism. Recent estimates put the maximum size at 12 meters, 39 feet, or 13 meters, 43 feet for females, and 10 meters, 33 feet for males from the posterior fins to the tip of the two long tentacles. That's crazy, like when you think about it. Like that's, you know, you're almost getting to like the length of a house, you know? 
Um, Absolutely. And uh, can you imagine as well, because you're thinking about that just in length or whatever, but those tentacles could be kind of splayed out. Mm. So it would look it would look huge, you know? The mantle itself, so the mantle is like the head part of a squid, is six foot seven inches long. More for females, less for males. And the length of the squid, excluding its tentacles, but including its head and arms, rarely exceeds 16 feet. Um, claims of specimens measuring 66 feet or more have not been scientifically Whoa. documented. So they've actually been reported, but not scientifically yeah. documented. And what that means generally is that, you know, there would be a scientific team that would verify the authenticity of claims. So if some guy sees a giant squid, he reports it to somewhere, somewhere sends out scientists, and if they can see it, they're, they'll document it. Um, a lot of the time with these sightings, you know, it's it's trawlers, it's it's fishing boats out at sea. They're not going to be able to do that. So, and giant squid are everywhere. Um, they're usually found near continental and island slopes near the North Atlantic Ocean. So around Newfoundland, which coincidentally, is where we've been talking about Norway as well, the British Isles, Spain, all around Japan, every pretty much everywhere. The the so the, the giant yeah. squid is everywhere. So if you want to talk about the discovery of the giant squid, Emin. Yeah, so the first specimens were discovered and described in uh, 1925, but it wasn't until 1981 that they actually had a whole adult specimen uh, that they managed to get a hold of. So whether that, I, I imagine that probably washed up on shore, mm -hmm. uh, similar to the pictures that you had above. Um, two decades passed after that um, for a second to be collected. So that shows you how long it takes to actually find one of these animals. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like huge gaps between the time. Uh, the largest colossal squid uh, was caught in 2007 weighing in at 495 kilograms that's massive. which is probably what i'm gonna weigh after corvid 19 is over <laughs> corvid 19 you know corvid yeah call like the crow 19, oh, okay. COVID 19. <laughs> um but even after decades of searching giant squids had only been been seen alive in still photographs so after all this time they never they never actually saw one move they'd, they'd wash up on shore they'd find pieces of and finally, in July 2012, scientists filmed the first video of a live giant squid swimming uh, around 2,000 feet below the surface of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the elusive creature could have been so much as 30 feet long. And the largest, uh, the largest giant squid they have on record is 55 feet long. Which so I guess when you're crazy. talking about guys saying 66 feet, you know, mm -hmm. obviously they haven't been able to validate it. But it seems like it's perfectly possible if the, the largest one on record is 55 feet long, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, is it even crazy to assume that, like, there is squid um, that have not been discovered that are even just, like, a third bigger, you know? So, like, 75 yeah, feet yeah. long. Um, the, a lot of the deep sea creatures only show up basically by accident. And, again, we go back to the living fossils um, from the Mokele episode, uh, the coelacanth was an example of that where they thought um, when they found a fossil, they found the fossil of the animal first and then they found a the fish after they found a the fossil. So when they found a the fossil, they were like, oh, this is a dinosaur or a fish. It was around at the time of the dinosaurs, blah, blah, blah. And then um, they find it years later. So, you know, you never know. Yeah. Um, proving that it's still alive yeah, yeah. so why, why don't you tell us about uh, some some attacks that the, the squid has, has has thrust upon upon people yeah so squids in case you didn't realise are actually kind of arseholes um, mm -hmm. and they do attack people so squids aren't squids aren't you know chilling they're not friendly they're not trying to high five you when you're out in the ocean like octopuses do octopi um, they, they will actually try and attack and kill you um, they don't give a shit so um, here's an account from uh, Britannia survivors attack. So according to a report recovered by Bernard Huvelmans, a giant squid attacked a raft with survivors from the Britannia in 1941, which had been sunk in the South Atlantic. One of the men was dragged away by the squid and another Lieutenant R.E.G. Cox managed to narrowly, narrowly escape the same fate. He suffered tentacle sucker wounds that seemed to belong to a 23 feet long squid. Marine naturalist John Cloudsy Thompson examined Cox's scars and validated the story. So 
this actually happened. Can you imagine how terrifying this would be, right? So that's crazy. You're yeah, you're on a ship, whatever, it gets sunk and you're going down. I expect this would have been World War Two, I assume. And you're in the ocean and you're like, Oh shit, you know, this is horrible. I can't see anything anywhere. Let's hang on to this raft and hope that we're saved. Next thing a fucking squid comes out of nowhere. And could you imagine how weird it would be to get attacked by a giant fucking squid? Yeah, I wouldn't much care for that. That, that, <laughs> that sounds awful. How fucking... I mean, look, I could take getting attacked by a dog or a bear or a cat. I could take... I could actually... Hmm. I could In my head, I could parse that information as I'm dying. I'd be like, okay, fair enough. Um, I get it. I, I was being an idiot. But a fucking squid. Imagine that. A squid attacking you. Yeah, it's you, like... like... <laughs> even in the water, you'd kind of go, all right, shark, here's the thing. Here's the... Mel- yeah, there yeah. goes my leg, whatever. Like, that would make sense. But I can... Just the utter confusion of, of tentacles, like, wrapping around you. And kind of, you know what I mean? Like, I just be like, what? A fucking... It's a what? <laughs> biting at you with, like, a lot of tentacles and these weird fucking eyes on either side of its head shining. And you're going, what in the name yeah. of fucking Jesus is going on? You know? No, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like that at all now. Do you want to tell people about the Humboldt squid, which is a type of squid? Yes. So the Humboldt squid are notorious for their aggression. Uh, in Mexico, they are known as Diablo Hojo, oh, which is Spanish for the red devil. Hmm. Uh, local fishermen's tales claim that people who fell into the waters were devoured within tens of seconds by packs of squid. Uh, wildlife filmmaker Scott Cassell made the documentary Humboldt, the man-eating squid uh, for the Dangerous Waters series of Discovery Channel. Um, so that sounds also pretty terrifying. A pack of squid. That's no, no thanks. No, check please. You know, <laughs> that, that sounds awful. Uh, and now, they're not giant. There is some, they're just regular squid. Mm-hmm. Just, they're just like, are they like streetwise squid? Mm-hmm. You can imagine like a group of them together just going after wallets and stuff. For sure. Bad lads, bad lads. So there is some disagreement about um, the veracity of the Humboldt squid aggression. Some scientists claim that the only reports of aggression towards humans have occurred when reflective diving gear or flashing lights have been present, acting as provocation. Roger Uzon, a veteran scuba diver and amateur underwater videographer, swam with a swarm of Humboldt squid for approximately 20 minutes, later saying they seemed more curious than aggressive. When not feeding or being hunted, Humboldt squid exhibit curious and intelligent behavior. So, I mean, like, to be fair, there, there's also, there's plenty of um, videos, actually, if you go onto YouTube, you can find people swimming with tiger shark or, or swimming with great white shark and stuff like that. And they're not trying to attack them. And obviously there's that thing that, you know, everybody aware of with the sharks, that because of the way their eyes are, they see the silhouette of people kind of close to the surface. So we'll mistake them for seal. Um, and then when they take a test bite, their their jaws and their teeth are so powerful and, and sharp that basically you're just probably going to bleed out, you know? Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, I think there's always going to be nice of any animal. Like, there's probably some lion or tiger that you could probably get close to without getting eaten if you got them at the right time. Um, mm, yeah. Probably. Like, there's probably some that would absolutely not go near you. But I've heard tales of a lot of wild animals being more afraid of you than you are of them. And, and, and they will try and keep distance. Unless they're hungry, then they're going to eat your ass. But like, say, a fully yeah. satiated animal. I don't know. I just think that um, squid, whether they're attacking you because they think you're fucking something or whatever, is bizarre and mental. Um, they're just a fucking... Have you ever eaten squid? It's tasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they know they're so intelligent. They know that we're eating calamari. And I'm, just like, yeah, well, uh, from now on, I'm going to enjoy fast. eating. I'm going to enjoy eating calamari <laughs> even more. So fuck these fucking squids. I gotta, I gotta chew the shit out of that. Um, so I gotta talk a little bit about the Jules Verne trophy squid. In 2003, a crew of yacht competing to win the round the world Jules Verne Trophy reported being attacked by a giant squid several hours after departing from Brittany, France. The squid purportedly latched onto the ship and blocked the rudder, rudder with two tentacles. Olivier de Kersausen, he was the captain, then stopped the boat, causing the squid to lose interest. We didn't have anything to scare off this beast, so I don't know what we would have done if I hadn't let go. If it hadn't let go, sorry. Um, so, you know, the squid here, right, 
so you know we've told tales about pirates getting attacked we've told tales about all that type of stuff in modern times 2003 the squid is attacking boats now these are small mm. yachts but still like so let's just play out a scenario um you know it was quite common for ships back in the day to have uh, smaller ships that they would you know they would anchor the big ship further away from shore they would get in smaller boats there is actually a proper term for those type of boats I, i'm too thick to remember and they would and they would go to land now it is quite possible that squids attack those boats and kill people right yeah, yeah. I mean, it is possible. What's really interesting about this, or really coincidental, is that they're going on the Jules Verne um, <laughs> yeah. yachting competition. <laughs> Jules Verne's the dude who wrote 20,000 League Under the Sea, famous for its giant, you know, squid or or kraken depiction. Um, so, I don't know, is it's, it's almost like a cosmic joke. Again, are the squid like intelligent enough to know they're like that fucking Jules Verne yeah that Jules Verne against us and that fight. Jules Verne blew up our spot motherfucker let's fuck up all these <laughs> bolts <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah these boys are going down again uh, just a just roving roving pods of squid oh no what, what did you say their their the plural was again oh Not uh, a terror of, uh, uh, a terror or um a scourge of squid is my medical a scourge of crack biological yeah, like term for um for, for a scourge um so you know really we're here in modern times with giant squid attacking bolts well these are smaller squid but nonetheless they're still attacking boats if i'm not mistaken somewhere there is an image now don't quote me on this but go and take a look of a squid beak ripping through a hole of a ship uh, an actual steel hole so now i might be talking about me hole but i think that actually did happen then <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I might be completely making this up and it may have been a dream, but I think it did happen, Eamon. Yeah, uh, I I want to believe it. I want <laughs> I want to believe it. On the Dossi Ariel. so the question is, you know, we have our Kraken, right? So like this is yeah. this is a plausible explanation for tales. It's very, you know, you've heard of Chinese whispers, how things spread and the change, not unlike Chinese viruses, actually. You've heard, so, you've got, <laughs> so, so Chinese whispers and Chinese viruses are apparently one and the same. But um, mm. so it, it spreads, it mutates, the tail changes, people, um, it gets bigger, it gets smaller, uh, it gets more aggressive. But I think it's fair to say that it did actually originate with tales of giant squid attacking ships. What do you reckon? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, again, I think it's probably similar to uh, some of the embellishments that, you know, you heard about the sirens and all this sort of stuff or the sailors talking about the mermaids, which people said were just really horny lads looking at manatees. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, it's probably, I don't know two parts reality one part embellishment you know that kind of way like 16 kilometers is it actually just 16 meters yeah i mean that that seems like a very big embellishment but um no certainly certainly uh um i think guy is probably probably trying to make the story a bit a bit more interesting than it was um but it's definitely rooted in in reality and is it possible that's something that's even bigger like they know that there's a 55 foot giant squid People have reported six reported sixty six foot giant squids. It's entirely possible that there could be something that's even bigger than that. You know, it, it wouldn't beggar belief. Um, yeah. So, like I said earlier, ninety five percent of the ocean is still undiscovered. Um, the deep seas are the area we know the absolute least about. The reason being, if if you don't know, is the deeper in water that you get, obviously, the, the more pressure that uh, incurs around the body that's moving down so you know uh, if you're deep sea diving you can get the bends if you come up too quick that's all to do with pressure even if you're in like say a, a submersible <clears throat> most of them until recently i don't think were actually able to get right down deep and i think even now they still can't get down to like the deepest areas that we want to go to i think james cameron is actually doing some of that isn't he yeah, he. Um, I believe that he didn't. He develop something to go through the wreckage of the Titanic. This is like after he made the movie a couple of years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or he funded something, some sort of mad yellow uh, deep sea device that was able to withstand an awful lot of pressure. The other thing as well is 
the further down into the water you go the further away from light you are so mm. even with like even with some sort of decent lighting equipment it's still going to be very hard to get a clear picture of what's what's down there you know um yeah no you're dead right i think um i think cameron actually goes down to the bottom of the ocean on his own now <laughs> in like a submersible um wow yeah i think he's actually i think there might be um don't quote me on it but there might be a documentary or something about that which uh people should definitely investigate um i'm in this podcast i'm just making up things and just telling people to go look for him so that's what i expect you to do i wasted um, the best years of my life looking for rob billington's recommendations on youtube <laughs> yeah. um so you know in um pop culture we've had like so many references to it and if you keep an eye out for the kraken um you definitely might see it more i know actually my girlfriend actually didn't know what a kraken was when she and i was like you definitely really know yeah i was like you definitely know what a kraken is you just haven't you know what i mean it's like you've seen it but you just didn't know that yeah, that's the name yeah. for it. um you're, what, you're not as loser loserish as us two kind of knowing what krakens and all the rest well of yeah well, we're terrible nerds so when we yeah. uh we get really into that type of thing um so you know, I, I I'm happy with the fact with this monster is um, it's probably explainable in reality, and as we move through our cryptids, uh, few of them actually are, which is why I kind mm. of found this one compelling. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's interesting as well because like the last episode we did was the Mothman, mm. and the Mothman is such a like compared to this. It's not like anyone is like, well, back in the 20s, there were sailors reporting a Mothman psychoactively kind of ruining their brains and <laughs> giving them uh, premonitions of the future. So, I mean, it's rooted in reality somewhere. Or, you know, they found the Mothman, but he was only three feet tall. So, I mean, you know, it is based on something. Like, this <laughs> one is legitimately coming from a... Uh, from stories that are, are true albeit probably embellished a, a, a lot but it i mean a, if i saw a giant squid i'd probably tell you it was like 16 kilometers long or whatever yeah i mean and, and as well like if you're getting attacked by something say you're a survivor of a fucking squid attack like it will seem bigger when you're being attacked by it because obviously you've never seen anything quite like it you know yeah yeah um so i think for the people listening if you want to check out some of the kraken sort of in pop culture uh Emin, do you have any of those that people can check out yeah there's a few so we will give you a quick rundown um the, i think the most famous is probably clash of the well sorry second most favorite famous is clash of the titans and mm. um, so in silent films of the 1910s and 20s the kraken was often portrayed using stock footage of octopus <laughs> in a bathtub attacking a toy ship which is really good oh, fun. Lord. <laughs> uh the the footage first appears in George Melia's 196 film Under the Seas, and it's been recycled Under in the other sea. films. <laughs> Ariel, come Ariel. Here to me, girl. Don't be going up onto the land. Ariel, what her, 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 uh, her auntie was actually a mean, uh, a mean octopus lady, wasn't she? Oh, she yeah, she, she had to have like all tentacles and stuff. Ariel, watch out for the squid. <laughs> oh, no, man. Are we going to be in cool runnings now? <laughs> um, but yeah, so the Kraken, I think. Where I know it most from is uh, the movie Clash of the Titans. Right. I remember watching this. It, it came out in 1981, and I, I remember. Well, I, I wasn't born till '84, but <laughs> I was a kid when it was shown on TV. Yeah. And it was the one that had Medusa in it, and it scared the absolute pants off me. Um, but it's depicted in that as a giant four-armed humanoid with scales and a fish set fish tail. Mm. It's said to be the last of the Titan. So mm. you have, you know, the Goliath and all those guys and the, the Cyclops would have been the Titans. In the 2010 version of Clash of the Titans, uh, featuring Sam Worthington, I believe, speaking of James Cameron, who made right. Avatar and Sam Worthington's in that, it's all oh. connected. Uh, the Kraken is again featured as a weapon of the Olympian gods. This version of the creature uh, has a humanoid head torso and arms but also has a number of tentacles instead of a tail it has a it's depicted with kind of crab like legs which is interesting given that you know people were wondering was it a whale a squid an octopus or a crab when we were talking about it being 16 kilometers uh wide uh he's given a new backstory as the creation of hades that was used to overthrow the titan and was later used again by hades to get revenge on Zeus for tricking him and famously, Liam Neeson has said, release the Kraken <laughs> as an internet meme. So there you go. Um, 
do you want to do you want to bring the listeners into 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 the next one? I think we have about what four or five of these. Yeah, Ariel, show me your tatalans. <laughs> Come here, girl, Ariel. It's me. What is he? A lobster or a crab? Uh, he's a he's a lobster called Sebastian, I think. Ariel, mama glut. Um. Ariel, I got my red rocket ready for you, girl. <laughs> Here, uh, shake it, my tatalan. Uh, Ari. Sounds kind of like Ali G mixed with a crustacean. <laughs> Crusty J. <laughs> Crusty J. <laughs> oh, God. Show me the sexy squid, girl. <laughs> um, take them seashells away from your chest, child. Take off them clams, Ariel. <laughs> Show oh, me God. a pearl. Um, <laughs> oh, Lordy Christ. Oh, um, Cthul- you can tell the listeners about Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm the Cthulhu. H.P. Lovecraft's novel, The Call of Cthulhu, is actually a really good Metallica song as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you read that? Yes. No, I didn't read The Call of Cthulhu. I read some other H.P. Lovecraft, but it's too old. <laughs> I can't I can't get into the right, and I feel like I'm reading the Bible or something. Um, yeah, no, the, the, I just I lasted there for a second. I had to take a break. Yeah, no, I think you're back now, though, are you? Um, you you've had your shot of insulin, you have. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I'll drink my um, turmeric tea. Uh-huh. <laughs> Turpentine tea. <laughs> so in short, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on the Kraken. Um, it's it's also in Game of Thrones. There's a lot of good. Um, the Greyjoy family have a lot of that sort of mythology mm. tied in yeah, with them. Yeah. And uh, I think it was the young Greyjoy that uh, famously said, Ariel, take me to... <laughs> 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 take me down to the mother sea. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think he said that. But uh, yeah, another good one to check out is yeah. uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. That's some other other Under the Sea. Is <laughs> oh fuck. Um, yeah, those are all. <laughs> those, those are all good. Oh my god, uh, <laughs> those are all good. <laughs> So um yeah, so that's pretty much the Kraken. So what do you think about the Kraken, Eamon? I I think that uh I I Jesus, we fair, we fair butchered the end of it, but oh, until that point it was pretty part, good. I like the Kraken. <laughs> the, end, the end is the best part of the Kraken, trust me. It was uh, oh, okay, all of right. the crack um was talking about uh, Yeah, do you think to 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 read us out we, we should do a rendition of um the Kraken by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Uh, yes. And we could do we can do a line by line in our uh, in our best um, in our best audiobook voices. Okay, you start. Okay. Below the thunders of the upper deep, far far beneath in the abysmal sea, <laughs> his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep. <laughs> the Kraken sleep. <laughs> Oh fuck! Oh god, that's not gonna happen anyway. You gotta finish it. You gotta finish it. Come on. The crack and sleep it. Faint the sunlight flee. You got it. Next one. About his shadowy sides, above him swell huge sponges of millennium growth and height. <laughs> and far away into the sickly light, from many a wondrous grot and secret cell. <laughs> Unnumbered and enormous polypy. Enormous. Widow with giant arms and slumbering green. <laughs> there hath he lain for ages and will he lie? Battling upon huge sea worms in his sleep. <laughs> Until the latter fire shall heat the deep. <laughs> then once by man and angels be seen. <laughs> in roar and he shall rise and on the surface die, girl. Irie, Ariel. Jesus Christ, that was good. That oh, was actually good fun. Christ. That was that was fun. My, I feel like I got an ab workout in it. Yeah, so if, if anyone wants us to read audiobooks <laughs> in Sebastian, the fucking crustacean's voice, um, we could definitely do that for people. Oh. Uh, have you got any oh, comments gosh. before we close out, Eamon? One fun fact, which is the guy who built the squid for the movie version of Jewel Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was the same guy who built the shark for Jaws. In my opinion, the giant kraken from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea looks very good for a movie that was made in the 50s and better than Jaws that was made 20 years later. 
Oh, that's a controversial statement no. there. So, but it's, it's not seeing the shark that scares you. It's if not it, seeing the shark that scares you. If anyone disagrees with them, and be sure to send them dick pics. <laughs> mm. Please. And be sure to write a lot about it in Twitter because I will not look at it. And I am sorry and apologizing now, but I, I'm very bad with the old Twitter. Okay, so thanks for listening, guys. And be sure to follow us on at Monsterverse Podcast. <laughs> And um, do do uh, follow us on Spotify actually. And oh yeah, share and uh, tag us if you're listening. You know, let people know that you're listening. Get the word out there because it's quite a competitive field, the uh, the old podcast field. So we are th- trying to break through that shit. And um, yeah, so all support very much appreciated. Isn't that right, Em? Yeah, we want to break through the thick and slimy undersea membrane to submerge into the surface and be be uh, be in the podcast. Oh that my god! Nice. Um, well, yeah. Oh so, gosh. thanks for listening, guys. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.